Okay, guys, I want to get into insect stings. Um, we are actually very popular in our state for insect stings. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, I think that uh, we're we're one of the we're actually one of the higher states in the union um, for insect stings, and I think it's just because of our array of insects that we actually have in our state, um, from bees to hornets to wasps to um, uh, brown recluses and and uh, black widows and all the other spiders out there and the tarantulas um, and then we have the scorpions and all the snakes and stuff like that we have a lot of stuff that can bite you out here and like four or five nine i don't know ten thousand different types of ants whatever the hell it is right but either way about three percent of adults and one percent of children are allergic to that kind of stuff and it counts for about uh, 50 deaths per year um, in the u.s <clears throat> So some pathophys of the actual insect itself, uh, the actual organ um, of most insects is a very small hollow spine projecting from the abdomen um, or a stinger, right? And that's usually where um, the venomation actually occurs is through that stinger. Um, some of them keep their stingers and they can sting multiple times. Others lose their stingers and they die right after they sting you because they've lost their stinger. But either way... Um, that stinger helps to inject that venom directly into your skin. Um, and most of them are pretty good targets. Most of the time when they are stinging you, they are injecting that straight into the vein. Um, and uh, that goes to your heart, um, which can really cause some serious problems for us pretty quick. So honeybees are not able to withdraw their stingers, okay? Um, so they do break off and they fly away and die, right? However, wasps and hornets and numerous other insects um, can sting multiple times and will sting usually multiple times um, in order to try to incapacitate uh, whatever they feel uh, happens to be a threat. Um, they um, usually when we are dealing with um, some sort of insect sting, um, we need to make sure that we're doing a real good head-to-toe survey on our patients um, because we have to find the stinger. And when we do find the stinger, we need to make sure that we're using some kind of hard object, uh, such as like a credit card or something, um, and go with the grain of the actual stinger in order to remove it. And we want to remove those pretty quick because if you guys have ever been stung by a bee, um, that stinger stays in you, but there's this little kind of um, like sack on top of the stinger and you can actually see it pulsating and that's it's it's still giving you venom Right, it's still injecting you even though that little thing kind of like a honeybee for example It stung you and it flew away. It's gonna die because it lost its stinger But that little sack of venom is still pulsating. It's still entering into your skin So we want to make sure that we're removing the stinger um, as fast as possible or trying to locate the stinger as fast as possible on our patients in order to remove it in order to stop the actual envenomation to keep you know, continuing it on um, ants we do have fire ants out here we have army ants out here um, we have a couple other other ants out here i forget what they are right now off my top of my head but they they're uh they're aggressive right they don't want your stinky feet next to their hole um because they can uh, strike repeatedly over and over and over again um, and when they start to attack they send out a response to all their uh, other homies um, and they come pretty quick right and they will mess you up um, it's a very irritating toxin um, it's actually um, um, it's it's its own little kind of special toxin it's similar to a neurotoxin but um, it can cause extreme burning, extreme swelling, extreme itchiness, um, and it's just uh, something that um, that they can actually use. From my understanding, they actually use some form of antibiotic to treat uh, in order to stop it. But it's extremely painful, um, and with the venom that's actually that they actually inject into you, it is a pretty painful bite. You know, most of us get stung by something, right? And we don't even notice it until all of a sudden this this uh, area becomes itchy and, and we just see this big old kind of welt um, around that area um, it could be like a sudden pain it could be swelling uh, it could be a localized um, like heat like almost like a temperature variance it's just kind of warm in the area of that uh, we could have urticaria um, because of that redness or light-skinned 
uh, redness in light-skinned individuals, okay, um, and lots of inging, uh, itching around the actual uh, wheel itself there. Um, so you guys can see on this picture, I mean, we've all had that. That's like almost your more common mosquito bite. Um, some of like the, uh, the wolf spiders, I believe, or something like that. Um, again, they can irritate us. Um, get leaving us a welt like that too. Um, and again, remember when, when we're actually being bit, it's usually because we're outdoors having some fun or, um, we're asleep, right? And, uh, you know, something just crawls on us and, and just bites us. So it happens, you know, um, most of these go, um, without a hitch, but sometimes some people are allergic to them and they can cause some pretty big problems. This is more for you guys and your loved ones. Um, when, when and if they get bit, um, ice goes a long way, and ice can really slow down the flow of the uh, of the venom, um, and it can kind of hinder the actual swelling that may occur uh, due to the bite itself. Because sometimes the swelling can be um, more dramatic um, than the actual bite itself. Um, unfortunately for us, uh, we don't carry ice on the trucks. Um, we have no way of carrying ice on the ambulance. Um, so hopefully if we can get to some ice, that would help your patient, you know, for close to, uh, I don't know, like a fast food chain when we pick up our patients or something like that, uh, go in there and see if you could steal a couple of ice, a uh, cup of ice for them. Uh, usually they're pretty cool with that, but you know, sometimes they're not just kind of depends. Um, we can put some ice on it for a patient to kind of help them out. Um, but again, usually with the insect stings, they are localized in nature, um, and they are not serious whatsoever. So we'll talk about the serious ones. Most of the time when we're talking about serious insect bites, we're talking about the bites that actually lead to anaphylactic shock or an anaphylactic reaction. And it's the exact same thing, guys. We're going to get bronchoconstriction. We're going to get a lot of wheezing. We're going to get a lot of airway swelling. Um, they're going to be short of breath. They're going to be uh, restless or irritable or um, they could be combative or possibly even confused. They're going to have gastrointestinal complaints, specifically usually with the insect stings and depending on the insect that bit them. Um, specifically, if it's like a, um, a spider or a snake or um, some kind of arthropod, I think that's what they are, or I don't know, um, like some scorpions or something like that. That can really upset the GI tract due to the, due to the venom that they have. So they might be complaining of like stomach cramps. Uh, they could vomit, right? They can have diarrhea because of it. And then again, um, if that patient starts losing their blood pressure and they start becoming hypotensive, their blood pressure starts to drop more than likely. They're becoming decompensated and we need to start to hustle on our treatment on these. So just like any other form of anaphylaxis, um, your patient may go into respiratory failure, which means this is where the patient that uh, obviously cannot control their airway. This area might be severely swollen. We need to make sure that we're getting ALS, ILS there quickly because they have some drugs that you guys don't that can help with this. Um, and if we um, can't treat this, we don't recognize in the first place, our patient can die real quick. So again, at the basic level, um, if we're seeing signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis, shortness of breath, agitation, irritability, combativeness, possibly um, confusion, um, pale, cool, clammy skin, uh, elevated heart rates, elevated respiratory rates, adventitious lung sounds, drops in blood pressure. Um, we can see the urticaria. We want to go straight to epinephrine. Okay, straight to epinephrine first, 0 0.3 milligrams into an IM um, injection site, so either the delta or the lateral aspect of the anterior thigh. Um, and then we want to follow up quickly right afterwards with a dual nib, 5 milligrams of um, albuterol mixed with 0 0.5 milligrams of ipotropium. Um, let them sit there and huff on that. Hopefully we have ALS on the way because or ILS because we can give Benadryl and possibly a steroid uh, to help combat this as well. Um, so make sure that we're getting ALS, ILS um, anytime that you guys are dealing with an allergic reaction. Okay guys, um, I skipped a lot, right? So make sure that you guys are looking over your um, 
primary assessment, secondary assessment stuff, uh, your reassessment, your history taking, all those slides that I kind of skipped back over for you guys um, that you guys can read on yourselves. Make sure that you guys are looking over your epinephrine uh, drug sheets. Make sure you guys are looking over your albuterol drug sheets and your ipratropium drug sheets as well. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to contact me via uh, email. Um, I know this was short and sweet. We've talked about shock quite a bit. Um, I did want to kind of just do some specifics on this. Um, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.